I'm okay with it. It's, it's emotional in a way because I've done 33 years service, which you know a lot of serving fire officers do that sort of time. But it's different for every single person. Everyone's different. Um, but for me, it's quite an emotional situation as I've worked myself through all the ranks. I've met and worked with a lot of good people over the years. So leaving after that time is a bit emotional, but it's my choice to go. So I'm resolved to it and all my stuff is packed, office is cleared. Um, so at the end of Monday, I'll be quite happy to, to, to leave and get on with uh, my life really. So 33 years, quick math, that's 1978. Uh, what first got you into it? Um, well, I was looking at various careers. Uh, my family on one side is Navy, my other side was Army, but no member of the family is in the fire service. And um, I've been, I was interested in doing something a bit different. I like risk, I like doing things with adrenaline and a, and a sort of a 19, 20 year old lad. I have plenty of sort of passion to do something a bit different. So when I saw the advert in the local county press, I uh, decided to have a go at it. I didn't think for one minute I'd be successful, uh, but I was, and I haven't looked back since really. And I'm sure that you've attended what thousands upon thousands of incidents, but any particular ones stand out? Um, well, as incidents go, they are slowing down. We're having less and less as years go by, and that's a good thing because of prevention, education, we're actually a lot safer nationally as well as locally than we used to be. But when I first joined, uh, we were going to fires every day, every night, uh, and quite a few big ones over the years. Um, all different types of fire, uh, from sort of barn fires, thatch fires, fires in fields, unfortunate house fires where people unfortunately lost their lives, uh, lots of car fires and, and, and incidents like that, and some larger fires like hotel, hotel fires we had over the years where uh, a, a, a big one was invented called the Beach Hotel and that was a quite an interesting fire. Um, from a point of view that it was exciting but unfortunately somebody was losing their property so the, the idea is to put it out as quickly as possible. Um, large factory fires over the years and I was on the Fowler's fire at Ride down Union Street when that caught fire and that was a large interesting fire again and worked really hard with other people to put that out. Um, one interest, there's lots of interesting incidents but we, we don't just do fires, we rescue animals um, from horses in ditches and things like that and cows in distress. <laughs> one interesting one was a swan that uh, flew into some uh, wires across the wooden creek there on the mud and uh, it hit the wires, landed on the mud, uh, low tide uh, and we were sent to try and rescue this swan that had broken its wing in about mud three or four foot deep. So that was interesting, sliding lots of flat pieces of tin in those days, we didn't have the right equipment and to rescue that swan took about three hours, but we did rescue it. We were absolutely covered in mud um, and off it went to the RSPCA and lived a long and happy life. So little ones like that, which aren't large fires, but really interesting to actually make a difference. So you mentioned there in, in the old days you had to use tin to get across things like um, you know, mud, mud flats. So how's the service developed over the years? Well, equipment has changed dramatically. It's a lot lighter now. It's, it's designed to meet fire service needs and rescue needs. Uh, before it was a case of getting something from engineering or from uh, a product that a garage would use for sort of hydraulics or for cutting. And nowadays it's designed for rescue professionally. So when you use it, it works uh, for the job you've got in hand. It's much safer, much more re reliable and much lighter. Uh, the days when I joined, it was getting equipment that could do the job from anywhere, really. So it's just the improvement in equipment, I think, in design. Now, when you became Chief Fire Officer, the, the service, I think it's fair to say, was in a bad way. It's been turned around a lot since then. So if you just give us a mind of how you turned it around and also what the future holds for it. Um, it was interesting days, and um, we, were, we were where we were. Um, we were assessed as uh, one of the two poor brigades in the country by the Audit Commission. It didn't mean to say we were poor in, in performance operational terms and going to fires, but all our back office processes, performance management, risk management, there's some cultural issues had to be addressed. Um, and basically we just got the team together, uh, a new set of managers, worked very, very closely with the trade unions, worked very closely with the fire authority, uh, and over a period of years, through using a, a, I think a raison d'etre that we all wanted it to happen for the right reasons to improve. Um, a lot of belief, a lot of sleepless nights, but we all pulled together literally, so it was a team affair. But um, yeah, we've, we've managed to work our way up now to, to quite a high performing little fire service, so I'm really, really pleased about that. And exciting times with the move to the, the, the Surrey Control Centre? Yes, I think so. It's, it's been difficult, a lot of tension around it, a lot of people got concerns about it, but um, we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't the best thing to do. It's, it's a, a better resilient, more efficient performance outcome. Uh, the public won't see any difference on the Isle of Wight. However, if, if there are any problems with our control system in the future, we have a much more resilient uh, system to fall back on that we've currently got. So it's a cost-effective, 
but a, a, an improved safety model for the island residents. Now you said you retire at midnight on Monday, which is the 31st of, of October. So come 9 o'clock Tuesday morning, what are you going to be doing with yourself? Probably some do-it-yourself jobs at home. I know everyone says that, but I have quite a few jobs at home to do, both inside and outside, and, and I've got time to do that now. So do that for a few days, I think. Um, I'm quite a busy person, so I won't be doing uh, that for long. I should do something else. I should get bored doing that. So I've got a, a, a few days away in America with some friends, um, and then come back and start some other professional work. I'm, I'm going to start my own company doing uh, risk management and uh, safety uh, consultancy, which um, not driven by the need to go out and do that for any income other than I want to do something with the, some of the skills I've picked up. I've been very lucky to be in a fire service over that many years learning these skills, and I think it's about time I gave something back, I think. So if you're driving from Newport to Ride and a, a fire appliance comes past you on the blue lights, you ever going to get tempted to follow it? Uh, no, no, not at all. No, no, just pull across and let the fire engine through. It's, it, it's a, it'd be a rare thing to see a fire engine go into a house fire. As I said, we don't have that many fires now, so if we do, it, it would be very serious. I'd be very surprised. But no, let them do their job. I can switch off of these things. It's been a long time, but it's somebody else's job as from the 1st of November, uh, and that can be done by our, our new management team. Now, you've been here since 1978, um, like you've mentioned, uh, 33 years. You must have met lots of lots of people, lots of work colleagues. Anyone you want to mention specifically? Um, I, I suppose if I was going to mention anyone, there would be um, the officer in charge of Whitewatch, a, a man called John Collis, who retired many years ago. And he lives in Rookley, and he picked me up and took me through my apprenticeship and made me learn the job properly from training school, and I owe him a lot. Um, others I've worked with in the past would be people like Alex Suthcote and Giles Lowe, my recent deputy and third officer before uh, the present management team took over. And, and they were fantastic supportive in the years of change recently. Uh, working very closely with a guy called Mark Deacon, who, who then was the Trade Union Chairman for the Fire Brigade Union. He worked very closely with management and the Fire Authority to help us through a lot of change. So, great guys there. But recently, the new management team have been excellent. Steve Apter takes over on Tuesday. I trained Steve many years ago. He's a great guy. He's got a great new team and he'll be fine. He'll continue with the good work. Um, but also a thank you to the Fire Authority and its officers and members, and particularly my director, Stuart Love, who has been fantastic uh, supported to the fire service and understanding the need to support us when the need was right. Money's always tight, but if the fire service needed something, he would be there uh, to put that, that resource in uh, if it was a benefit to the community and the firefighters. So a lot of thanks to a lot of people over the years.